Well, welcome to our live webinar. My name is Nicola Pomponio. Thank you so much for taking the time to log in. We are so excited to be able to virtually travel to Germany. Today, we discover one of the icons of sex production. Without further ado, I would like to hand over the virtual microphone to Miriam Dela, International and National Brand Manager of Henkel. Welcome, Miriam. How are you? Hi, Nick. I'm well. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, thank you. I'm very excited about today. It's really great to have this international audience today. Really wonderful. So we're excited to learn a little bit more about Henkel. Yeah, cool. So uh, first of all, I thought I'd give you a li little introduction into um, yeah, who am I, and then I'll talk you through the history of Henkel and some nice fun facts about our really nice brand. Um, so first of all, um, my name is Miriam Dela. I've been working with uh, Henkel for six years now, and since last May, I'm looking after the Henkel brand. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to be here with you all from worldwide. Um, there are some Henkel Freshnet group um, colleagues and also our partners, welcome. And we are here at the Marble Hall in Wiesbaden. So um, this is where the headquarter of the Henke Freshnet group is. And I'm really excited to show you in the background this lovely building. And yeah, it's great to have you all here. And um, yeah, I thought I'll talk you through as um, I'm German and the brand is German. I thought I'd talk you through some nice German words as a little introduction. So um, if Julia could share the screen with us oh yeah perfect cool um so first of all i thought okay our first word in german is hello which is pretty easy it's hello um for you um english native speakers and um then i thought okay another nice word to learn in german is the word um tschüss which means bye so also quite similar a bit similar to ciao in in italian um, and what an important word to learn, um, of course, because um, if you are drinking a Henkel, you should say um, zum Wohl. Um, so zum, zum Wohl means cheers in German. There's also another word for cheers, um, which is Prost, but you rather would use Prost for um, the Oktoberfest or for beer occasions and not for sparkling wine. So, um, introduction um, for myself and the chairman and um, yeah now um, I think we'll go on with Henkel the brand right Nicola yes you know I always thought that it was cheers when you said bye I didn't know it was choose at all these years I'm glad that you you had it written out for me because I always said cheers to people thinking that that was the way you said goodbye but it's actually no. choose so that's I actually learned something here. Thank you very much. Yeah, tell okay. us a little bit about the history and location of Henkel. So um, we're here in the Marble Hall. So the Marble Hall is one iconic um, symbol for the Henkel brand. And the Marble Hall and um, our headquarters is located in Wiesbaden. Um, you might wonder where Wiesbaden is. So Wiesbaden is in the middle of Europe, in Germany, and we are there where you can see the red arrow um so um in western germany close to cities like frankfurt or mainz um so i personally live in mainz um yeah so close by and uh wiesbaden is the capital of the federal state and um, hess so you might know um germany has 16 federal states and um, I, I thought it would be nice to give you, even though it's only virtual, I thought it would be nice that you can still see some images of Wiesbaden. It's a picturesque town. We have, it's a health resource. So we have a huge old buildings from that time and old houses and it's lovely. And um, you can also see on the bottom on the left hand side you can see Schloss Biebrich so the US guys of you might know um, the product Schloss Biebrich so um, this is also a real castle here in Wiesbaden and on the bottom uh, side uh, right hand side you can see um, Henkelsfeld so this is where I am sitting here 
So this is, I'm right here in this building on um, the right hand side. So amazing building and even more impressive marble hall. And I thought it would also be nice um, to show you um, the lily on the cork um, of the Henkel product. And also you can see the fleur de lis on a lot of different um, packaging items on our product. Um, and this symbol is also the symbol for the city of Wiesbaden. So um, you can see the Henkel brand is quite linked to the city of Wiesbaden. Yeah. Very nice. Why is Wiesbaden called the gateway to the Rheingau? Um, Wiesbaden is really close by to the Rheingau and um, you might know the Rheingau is one of the wine regions here in Germany and it's a really prestigious a wine region and it's really really famous for Riesling. Um, you um, probably all know um, Schloss Johannesberg, so um, this is also located in Rheingau, so we are only a 20 minutes drive away from um, Schloss Johannesberg, so yeah, and everything in Wiesbaden is linked to the Rheingau and to drink wine, um, so there are a lot of wine festivals here in the city before COVID, you have to say. Um, but yeah, it's uh, really linked with the wine drinking and yeah, Henkel is the perfect place to be located right here in the middle of wine region. I, it's amazing that uh, Schloss Johannesburg is only 20 minutes away. I wasn't aware of that, but then again, I haven't been there. So uh, how could I be aware of it? Uh, oh. By the way, your background is so much better than mine. That's why I turned off my camera. That is a, a quite an extravagant uh, marble hall. Is that, uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called the Marble Hall. So um, you can see a lot of marble here. Um, and yeah, that's why it's called the Marble Hall. Um, it uh, was built in the early 20th century. Um, but I, I think I'll start from the beginning of the Henker brand. Um, so um, let's start with um, the date 1832. In 1832, a guy called Adam Henker decided to, to um, open the wine merchants um, in Mainz, so, as you, uh, so the city where I live. And in um, this city, he decided, okay, let's sell some wine. And during that time, he also traveled a lot. And so it came that he was also traveling to France. And in France, he, um, he um, got to know um, sparkling wine or champagne back then. And he thought, oh, this is a really nice thing. We should also do it here in, uh, in Germany. So uh, he traveled back and in 1856, he decided to um, do his own sparkling wine. And um, he started to call it by his surname. So he started to call it Henkel. And um, yeah, then the brand became bigger and bigger and it was a huge success and um, so that in uh, 1910 um, the the brand was a market leader for a sect um, and just before um, the production site in Mainz was getting too small so um, his descendant so his grandchild Otto Henkel um, decided to um, build a, a, a really prestigious production, uh, production site where he can also um, welcome guests from all over the world as it was a huge success, this Henkel product. And um, as you can see here, um, the, the marble hall was built in 1909 and um, I'm still sitting here. So from that time and more than 100 years ago, the Henkel headquarters is still here in, in this marble hall in Wiesbaden. Yeah, and um, yeah, nowadays the brand is really um, a huge success. So Henkel is all over around the world. It's exported to more than 100 uh, countries in the world, uh, which makes it the most exported sparkling wine brand of Germany. And um, it's really amazing because we have um, different main markets. So apart from Germany, um, there's a big market in Austria. We also are the number one in Canada, the number one sparkling wine in Canada. 
and we are the number one imported sparkling wine brand in Australia as well. So, um, or you can also see the other countries. I only uh, mentioned a few examples because it would be by far too many examples of where Henkel is uh, sold. But um, I think um, you get my point that this is really um, a worldwide brand and um, everything is produced here in Wiesbaden. It's amazing. I just made some bullet points here. One billion bottles. Um, yes number one in Canada, number one in Australia. It's uh, it's just amazing what the Henkel, uh, Henkel brand has done. Wow. So international and um, I think it's also because of the taste of Henkel, um, because the taste is really, everyone loves the Henkel taste. So it's it's quite unique, but it's also easy to drink. It's, it's not champagne, it's not Prosecco, it's sect, but it's really an easy to train sect and you can drink it on yeah, several occasions. It's great. Speaking of sect, can you tell us about the history of sect and how it compares to Charmat and Champenois method? Yes, of course. So um, there were others. So um, there are plenty or quite a few of producers of, of sect and they all um, are still, or most of them, are still producing today. So um, the German sect market is huge. And you might know, not sure if you know, but um, Germany is in fact the uh, number one country. So we are um, the world champion in drinking sparkling wine. And we I might not be in soccer for now, but uh, we are in drinking sparkling wine. So every German is drinking um, around about 3.5 liters of sect or other sparkling wines per year and which makes us the world champion. So we are um, so followed by Spain, Italy, um, but we are number one in drinking sparkling wine and a lot of people also drink Henkel here. Yeah, so this is also yeah, a bit of the history of sect, um, but also, um, yeah, it might be some fun fact about um, the German sect is that you have to um, pay a sparkling wine tax. If you buy a bottle of sparkling wine here in the supermarket, you pay um, around one euro per bottle so that you can drink sparkling wine and still the Germans love sparkling wine and uh, they drink it on several occasions. They drink it with friends during the week. They drink it, of course, for festive occasions. But yeah, it's it's really um, popular here in Germany. Um, so we, I need to call out a few countries then, Miriam. US, you need to drink a little bit more sparkling wine. Germany's in the lead. Uh, plus all the other countries on the on the line today: Paraguay, Ecuador, Montenegro, Serbia, Jordan, Croatia, Chile, Panama, Russia, Canada, yeah. Austria, Switzerland, and the UK. You need to drink more sparkling wine. We need to give uh, Germany a little run for their money. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Miriam, should. let's uh, <laughs> let's taste let's taste some wines. What do you think? Yeah, of course. So I today I have um, several products for you. Um, First of all, I want to show you our main product, the, uh, the hero product, Oops. like this. Oops. It's the Henkel truck. It's um, the main product all over the world. So this is the hero. But for today, for you um, US guys especially, I thought, OK, let's try the fruit today. So this is the Henkel fruit. And I'll give it a try. And afterwards, we also will try the rosé. Um, but now, first of all, the fruit. Um, yeah, um, as you can see, it's um, really light, pale yellow. It has some slightly greenish reflections. Um, it smells really fresh. Um, it smells, you smell citrus. You smell some apple, you smell pear as well. Um, it's really good. Yeah, I did. I got citrus and pear right away. Those were the two really, they stood out <laughs> immediately. I, I'm really sorry for you guys that I'm the only one drinking now. Oh, don't but, think that's true, Miriam. I bet you there's a lot of people on drinking right now. Okay. Even even us on the Hopefully. West Coast at 8, 8 19 a.m. We're, we're tasting, we're ready to go. <laughs> okay. So so, some wool to all of you. 
watching me drinking right now. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's it's well balanced. It has a nice acidity. Um, so it's a perfect product. Um, you could pair it to grilled meat. You could also pair it, um, yes, to some antipasti or some savory savory tapas. So it goes really well. And um, for those of you who wonder, okay, where's the difference between the trocken and the prude? The prude it has less sugar and then the trocken. So um, it's yeah, it's really really nice, but still it's not. It's not too dry. It's just a lovely very, product. Very well balanced. Very, very uh, nice on the palate. Very elegant. It's very crisp. Nice yes. Really beautiful wine. Yes, very nice. Let's uh, let's roll into the next wine. Okay, the next one. The rosé. Hey, by the way, what is that little bottle behind you? The little one that's behind you. I forgot to mention. <laughs> I just noticed that. This little bottle is called a piccolo. So um, Henkel was the one who invented the word piccolo. So um, small in Italian for those small bottles. And um, yeah, um, it's really cool because we, Henkel, own the word piccolo for small um, sparkling wine bottles. And in fact, um, we are, um, Hang on, it's uh, okay. We are, uh, yeah. So we invented the word um, piccolo for small sparkling wine words, and now I got my point again. And um, so uh, it's used in Germany. Everyone says piccolo to a small sparkling wine bottle, even though it's not Henkel. So it's really, um, as um, yeah, it's known. Everyone in Germany calls a small bottle of wine a piccolo bottle. So it might be similar to um, Kleenex for tissues. So it's Piccolo for small sparkling wine bottles, which I found, uh, which I find really interesting. I think yeah. that's great. I, I I thought of the same thing right when you said Piccolo. I started thinking about you know Kleenex. It's the same word. It's people. Yeah, it's the same word. So, word. It's a branded yeah, it's word. True. Sorry, sorry it's to pull you away from the rosé. I I just saw the little bottle back there, and I said to myself, Let, let's let's talk about that little bottle. And I love the word piccolo. Piccolo is uh, piccolo well, is very nice. Isn't it? It, that was always, you know, you always heard that word piccolo, piccolo. So, so yeah, so every German would say piccolo to a small bottle of wine, um, and yeah, it's owned by Henkel. Okay, that's a now good taste rose. on to the rosé. Hmm. Okay. Um, you can smell red berries and also a hint of strawberry, I would say. Um, and it looks really nice. It has a nice light, pinky, um, salmony um, color. Right away, I got raspberries right off the nose. Beautiful. Raspberries and, and strawberries. Yeah. Yeah, raspberries indeed. It's really nice on the plate, also really well balanced. Um, it's a bit sweeter than the first one. So this one is a dry sparkling wine, um, but yeah, still really nice. It goes well um, with um, some, yeah, after dishes uh, or anti as an aperitif, you can do it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's my favorite one. I'm going to save this bottle for tonight. I'm going to have a little bit of sushi, and I think this is going to be fantastic with uh, with sushi. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, perfect. Perfect with fish or other seafood, I would say. So it's a really nice product. Fantastic, yeah. Miriam. By the way, um, everyone on the call, uh, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat because we're going to roll into our Q&A here in just a moment. So if you do have any questions, please type them into the chat and we'll go ahead and ask Miriam. Uh, Miriam, the first question I'd like to ask you, and thank you so much for uh, going through the wines and, and uh, tasting them, by the way. The first question I wanted to ask you is, why does Henkel use the particular red ribbon on the capsule? Um, in fact, it's a marketing tool. Um, so um, it was first introduced in 1925. Um, and it was introduced because um, 
if you have the bottle of Henkel in an ice bucket, um, you don't see the front label, so you don't see the branding. So the the guys at Henkel were always already really good in advertising stuff. So they th thought, okay, let's do it with the red ribbon and let's do a Henkel red ribbon there. And if the bottle is in the, an ice bucket, you can still see the branding. You can still see, okay, people are drinking um, Henkel. So that's why they introduced the um, red ribbon and still today it's on the bottle. So it changed slightly with the times, but still it's yeah one of the iconic um, elements of the Henkel brand. We discussed the Piccolo earlier because I saw it behind you, but how did it come about? Uh, wh wh how did that happen? I think it's really cool that the, you know, the trademark, the name Piccolo, like Kleenex, it's really, really great. But how did that actually come about? Yeah, um, it was in the 1930s, um, so during the Depression, uh, ordinary and it, something really only rich people could afford or richer people could afford. So. Um, People thought, okay, um, let's have a small bo bottle for a reasonable price to also allow others to try sparkling wine. And um, it's perfect because it it holds um, two glasses of wine, as of sparkling wine. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it, it's kind of Henkel democrat democrat uh, democratic. <laughs> <laughs> democratize um that's the word i was looking for um uh, the sparkling wine sector because um with a small bottle people could afford a small bottle and so they were allowed to also drink the lovely henkel yeah, there's always a story behind things and if you don't ask you don't what's your favorite wine from henkel uh, um in fact, I, I I like them all, um, but um, you might have noticed I really, really like the rosé. Um, it really goes well, and you could drink it with friends, um, and it's an easy to drink wine, especially in summertime. Um, if you, yeah, are um, um, uh, if you are outside and you just want to drink a, a light glass of wine, the rosé, the Henke rosé is perfect for that. So um, that's my favorite one, especially in, in summer times. Maybe I'll change my mind in the winter times, but yeah, for summer, the Henke rosé is perfect. Great. Well, you know what, Miriam? I appreciate your time. Like I mentioned, that background is gorgeous. I wish I could be there just walking through the uh, the beautiful marble palace that you have behind you. It's it's gorgeous. I can't wait to come to Germany. Um, I don't have any other questions in the queue at this point, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your time. I can't believe 30 minutes has already flown by. It's amazing how quickly this goes. Um, the the uh, the wines are fantastic. I appreciate your time, yours and Paula's. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back to you for the close. But thank you so much for taking the time to speak uh, to Henkel. And uh, I really look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Yeah, thank you, Nicola. Um, it was really great to talk you all through um, the Henkel brand and tell you a bit of fun facts about Henkel. And, um, after this strange times after COVID, um, I, I, I hope I can all welcome you here and um, here in this really nice marble hall in Germany. So um, yeah, come all and uh, I would love to welcome you here. So um, have a good day, um, whatever time zone you are in. So far for me, it's um, pretty much evening now. For US guys, it's early in the morning. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, have a good day. Thank you very much um, for joining and thank you very much for um, listening to me. And if you have any further questions, um, yeah, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Miriam. Thank you so much. What a wonderful, wonderful webinar. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>